They are childhood friends united by a tragic bond. As haemophiliac children at Trelaw College in Hampshire in the 70s and 80s, they were infected with HIV or hepatitis C in contaminated blood products dispensed at an NHS-run clinic. They are among just 16 out of 86 boys still alive. When Steve Nichols gave evidence to the public inquiry, he made good on a 40-year-old promise. I've lived a lie for 40 years, um, and now I feel that now is the time to stand up and be counted, and I felt obliged to stand up for all my friends and all the other attendees at Trelaw College in Alton. 86 haemophiliac boys attended, only 16 survived today, and I'm lucky enough to be one of the 16. An astonishing number is that hepatitis C and HIV ultimately that cause Both. most of those deaths? Both. Various strains of hepatitis, HIV and BCJD was all pushed through that college to schoolboys between the ages of 8 and 16. We were clean young boys, you will hear the expression pups, previously uninfected patients, virgin haemophiliacs. Basically we were guaranteed to be clean, we were all prepubescent, we'd never been sexually active, we'd never been exposed to drugs and none of us had ever taken alcohol, they guaranteed our blood was clean so they could inject us and test us as and when required. You believe there was a deliberate trialling of these Absolute, blood factor products? Absolutely I do. It was weekly, fortnightly they were taking blood, we were never told why, and it was large quantities of blood for testing for various diseases, for various infections. You've lost so many friends, how important is to you that this inquiry pursues that line of investigation? Absolutely. In I'm standing here today not only representing my, uh, myself and my own, putting my own personal views across, but I feel compelled to put the views across of the um, 69 boys that are no longer with us and tell their story. And I think I, I'm, I've told it today. Haemophiliacs were getting ill, they were starting to die, and the link between haemophilia hepatitis and HIV had been made and we realised that this is serious and that it's highly likely that this is going to affect us and some of us are not going to come out of this alive and we made a pact that uh, when it does hit the fan and it will hit the fan the persons or the people who are left will stand up and tell the story as it was and tell the truth and hopefully get justice for all the boys that have died. You feel like you've done that today? Absolutely, I do, yes. I think they'd be proud. I hope so. I hope so. We lived together, we ate together, we learned together, we played together, we grew together. Um, they were more than friends, they became like brothers, like peers, siblings even. So that bond is much greater than friendship, it will never be broken. Four of the 16 here today, there should be 89.